Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I explore an idea that I think was suggested in the comments at some point and I just jotted down on my great list of things to do and that's to send a Gemini mission to the moon from the shuttle's bay, which is certainly doable and in this case I have uh, confined myself to real stages uh, for the sake of realism, I guess, and uh, we will see if it works out. But uh, this is not a lander mission right now. We'll do that separately. Uh, the, this is just an orbiter around the moon that will have to come back. So there's the return vehicle as well. So get the crew to the moon, dock or rendezvous with the lander, and they'll transfer over to the lander, which will have been launched separately, possibly by the shuttle, and we could try that out and then they'll land, come back up, uh, and get back to the Gemini capsule and come back. So we'll just do the getting into orbit around the moon and trying to come back bit. So yep, that's the plan. And what we have here is uh, there's a trans stage here. I'm using Raider Nick's uh, trans stage from his US rockets pack and it's somewhat underfueled. We're using a trans stage because it's got storable fuels and that's probably what they would choose to use in this case as well. And uh, I don't have a decoupler between the Gemini adapter section and the trans stage because we don't need to. We'll just have the trans stage hang out with us uh, for the entire way back. It's going to make the return burn anyway. Uh, I have taken out the PSPC, which is the retro rockets in the Gemini adapter retrograde section. We didn't need those, uh, but we needed the section for the RCS purposes and otherwise everything else is the same. Trend stage is a stage with two AJ-10 137s, or sorry, 138s. They're sort of related, broadly speaking, to the shuttle's own OMS engines. And here we have a Centaur G stage. The Centaur G is sort of a smaller version of the Centaur T, which was meant for the shuttle, uh, for the shuttle Centaur missions, uh, though those were canceled after Challenger. Uh, the Centaur G is smaller and more convenient in here. If I tried to fit a Centaur T in here, uh, it wouldn't fit. The Gemini capsule ends up clipping into the cabin in front. So I'm very happy that Centaur G was proposed at some point. And we have it here. So we've mounted it like this and we'll see how it goes. There are RL10s at the bottom, just like any Centaur has. And I think it's this RL10A4 configuration. So yeah, now one um, minor thing is that I've detanked the Centaur and we will actually fill it up with the fuel from the external tank. This uh, is leftover fuel after we get to um, not full orbit, but where the external tank is about to separate and we need to do the OMS burn. So the coast to apoapsis. And the reason we're doing that is for safety sake, actually. Uh, this is a good idea that somebody had had in during the shuttle program uh, to allow the shuttle to um, abort if necessary. Keeping a fully fueled Centaur in the bay uh, makes it dangerous for abort and also makes the shuttle too heavy to return. But uh, making starting it off detanked does help with that. So I, I think with the shuttle umbilicals being very capable at feeding hydrogen and oxygen and they should have been able to connect it up to the centaur appropriately and I think it's feasible so that would be a good thing altogether this would be a very very heavy payload for the shuttle uh, even empty right now if we uh, you see 2017 tons if I take it out it's 18 tons detanked and if we fill her up it's, it's like 30 something tons. So we're pushing the shuttle's capabilities and really we're seeing whether having the super lightweight tank, I don't know if this is the texture for the super lightweight tank actually, it is physically the super lightweight tank, but um, yeah, it is super lightweight. Okay, so maybe that increased the shuttle's payload capacity by enough for this sort of thing. We'll see, uh, but yeah. Let me just close it up and we will find out. Okay, so let's see how this goes. In the shuttle, we will check that the launch script is going to the right inclination. It is. 
And so run shuttle. And here we go again. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's just that the rest of Florida looked rather bluish, but no, I guess that's just how the green looks. Well, I don't know why those engines were activated. <laughs> I might have some staging problems. Just shut those down for now. At least the uh, fuels were locked. Okay, getting ready for booster sub. And there they go. Well, now's the question. Uh, oh, right. I needed to change the script so it doesn't let go of the external tank. Oh, that's complicated, isn't it? Well, we'll, uh, we'll transfer the fuels close to orbit. I mean, it was just uh, an abort thing, so let me... Oh, okay. We'll start the transfer. Okay, Centaur G is fully tanked now. Well, it's looking pretty close. We'll see. Alright, uh, looks like we made it barely. Uh, there was a tiny, tiny bit of Delta V I saw there. Uh, yeah, just barely. Well, our Apoapsis is really high. Didn't really need that. Okay, about to make orbit here. Alright. So, that's that. Let's open it up. So, that's full. That's not quite full, but okay. And we'll just cheat and transfer crew in. Technically, we would have one stay in the Gemini capsule and the other transfer to lander and be a one-person landing, but we won't deal with that part. If you're wondering about Apollo, Apollo is a little bit too heavy for this business. So, yeah, that's bit too much, especially since it sort of relies on its service module, like Gemini needed its service module as well. So I don't think that'd work out very well. Okay, now we'll get out of the bay and then figure out the whole business. I hope this decoupler isn't too forceful. Um, I should decouple this one. Okay, not forceful at all, uh, which actually poses its own problems. Well, um, we better get out of the way. <laughs> oh, why isn't it shiny? It needs to be shiny. All right. Um, okay. Well, we will let the shuttle be for a sec. We've got Barnard and Madford, and now I need these RCS to be enabled. Okay. I hear the shuttle doing its own RCS burns. Okay. Here we go. It's probably a little bit too vigorous. I didn't put the little nose cap, by the way, since it was in the shuttle's bay. I didn't need the aerodynamic nose cap. Okay, just kill rotation there. Now, the moon is here. And relative inclination is not bad. Alright, so the burn is in 55 minutes. Well, we'll see how bad the boil off is. We put MLI layers on here. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we need to activate the fuel cell. Only one day of oxygen. Uh, well, start oxygen generator. I hope that works well. <laughs> activate those. Okay. Still doesn't read the right delta V. Um, well, I guess we'll find out the hard way. There's 31 tons right now. And apparently we lost the node. We could possibly underfuel the adapter equipment section. It's not doing all the maneuvers that Gemini was tasked to do, and we're keeping the trans stage along anyway. Okay, Ullage. And Ignition. And... Yeah, I don't know 
how much delta V we actually have. <laughs> okay, about to be done with this stage. Okay, we want to throttle down there. Uh, separation. We lost the node again. I hate when that happens. Okay, the throttle is down. Separate that off. We don't need that. Now we've got the free trans stage. And I'm going to activate. Activate. Well, it's not supposed to be 99 meters per second. Oh no, I was using NTO from up there. Okay. Um, let's get that NTO back up there. And we need to change the priority. Okay. Well, at least there doesn't seem to be an ignition limit on the trans stage engines. So, let's continue burning and just look at it from here. I keep taking away my plots. What can I do? Okay. Oh, oh it's too far. Too far. Um, well, we'll do a mid course as expected. Okay, that's a fair moon periapsis. Will everything else hold out properly? Now I have a confession to make. I did not put an additional heat shield on the Gemini capsule. It's just got its normal bottom with its ablator. So Barnard and Madford might be out of luck when we bring them back to Earth. But that's only if we get that far. Okay, that'll do. Let's get over to the moon. So far, so good. But I don't know how much we have for getting back and making orbit and getting back and everything because this reading is definitely wrong. We definitely don't have 3,000 left in the strand stage. It's not that good. You know, that, that, that would be pretty wonderful for a stage. Actually, we've used way more water than I thought we would. It took us a long time to get here. This isn't the best approach for the moon. Okay, here we go. I don't remember if the textures are okay in this install or not. <laughs> Every install, I've got so many installs of KSP, I can't keep track of everything. Well, looks interesting. But maybe it's all wrong, I don't know. Okay, and retro. Please tell me the engines can gimbal. Oh, I don't think the engines are gimbling properly. That might be because of the way I activated them. Oh, just can you kill rotation, please? Let me see if rearranging the stages will give us a proper read on our delta V. Okay, 1,700 might be right. That's probably wrong. I, I believe this. I'll just put that there. Nope, that makes it wrong again. Which is plenty, plenty to rendezvous with something, station or something else, and then come back. We need 800 to come back, so... Why is it wiggling so much, though? Oh, that's a little bit too low of a periapsis there. Um, okay, I don't want to use all my hydrazine like that. This will have to do as the periapsis. There's Earthrise. And once we get to periapsis, we'll bring the apoapsis down to an even tighter orbit. So maybe we could have lightened things up. I think there's too much delta V for it to carry. And that would give the shuttle a little bit more margin. Not that we needed it, but... I swear, this RCS... well, it's disabled. There we go. Now it's enabled. Uh, this seems like it's over rcs though. Well, that's a really, really tight orbit. Alright, well, anyway, I'm gonna plot to return now. 
Okay, should be good enough. Let's go. I guess it's a little bit early. Okay, I'll take it back. Let's not go. Just taking a look at the stage time. Okay, now... Let's go. Uh, that should be good enough, maybe... Okay, let's try that. Can we get back? Well, off we go. Departing the moon. There are obviously other obstacles to using Gemini for the moon, like navigation. I don't know how well star tracking worked with the Gemini computer, but overall it probably would need at least a computer upgrade. Okay, we are back in Earth orbit. That's a fine periapsis for now. Well, as far as our supplies go, we seem to be coming back on time, but barely. But that's because I took a long trip to the moon instead of the right timing. Okay, here comes Earth. Got smack right into Cape Canaveral now. We're gonna end up on the nighttime side, it looks like. Okay, let's start decoupling things. Make sure we have power in here. Yeah. Uh, we should get some water. Oh, we need the RCS fuel up there. Uh-oh. Could have just locked that. Good thing I checked. Okay. Let me just pre-activate that RCS. And going through staging. That was not what I wanted to stage. Oh, gosh. Um, didn't this have a... Okay, maybe I have to just decouple like that. Alright, well, our parachutes are a little bit exposed. <laughs> uh, that was not what I wanted to stage off. Okay. There goes trans stage and the Gemini adapter section and all. I guess we'll try descent mode. Okay, no longer controlling pitch. Our trans stage has already blown up. I said no longer controlling pitch. Stop it. I don't know. The whole roll control thing doesn't seem supposed to be this way. Well, we're sort of going off to one side instead of right side up or upside down. Sure doesn't want to do anything with roll. <laughs> but I think we'll be alright. Well, we're getting a lot of G-forces though. Well, we are coming down and it looks like we didn't need an additional heat shield after all. Okay, well that felt lengthy, but it's dissipating. Actually, the G-forces are going up now. I wish we could control roll properly, but it's just not doing it at all. I've taken off the pitch and yaw, but all it wants to control is pitch and yaw. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it to control pitch and yaw. I told it to stop that. Stop it. Stupid, smart ASS thing. Okay, drug shoot is out. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to 7.8 meters per second, so success! We have, in fact, launched a Gemini mission to the moon with the space shuttle. And we could probably do it with even better margins by reducing the amount of fuel on the trans stage. So, yeah, that is the result of that, but we probably want to send a lander, don't we? Well, that will have to be another thing, but... Depending on what gap seal we use for the lander, it could be less, it could... It's tough, I mean, it's tough to beat a Gemini capsule, to be frank. Um, 
so we probably should just use a Gemini capsule. But then, well, I'll think about that. Anyway, uh, this part works. So remember, trans stage and uh, a centaur G. That's that's the way to do it. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.